You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Afghanistan under Taliban regime regaining its crown as terror hub. Pakistan pushing narcotics and fake currency into India. And India flays United Nations Security Council for being selective on terrorism. Let's begin with Afghanistan, where intensified violence is fueling concerns that the country may again become a hub of instability and terrorism across South Asia and beyond. Dozens of groups that have been present since the Taliban's last turn in power are again operational, looking for opportunities to expand their reach. People are being killed in explosions across the war torn country. And there is blood and fear everywhere. A report. On August 6, a massive explosion in a busy shopping street in Afghanistan's capital left eight people dead and numerous others injured. The bomb exploded in a western district of the city where members of the minority Shiite Muslim community regularly meet. According to a Taliban police district commander who was present at the site, the explosion was caused by a roadside bomb hidden in a port. Islamic State terrorist group took responsibility for the bomb blast. The attack came ahead of Ashra, a commemoration of the martyrdom of Hussein, a grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, which is marked mainly by Shiite Muslims. <laughs> The war-torn country has been witnessing a series of terror attacks staged by Islamic State group in the last few weeks. The group has been targeting the Afghan security forces, religious minorities, including Shia Muslims and Sikhs. Just a day before the incident, eight people were killed and 18 wounded in a blast near a Shiite Muslim religious gathering in Kabul. Eyewitnesses reported that when the explosion occurred, members of the minority sect, including women and children, were engaged in annual morning rituals. Islamic State does not control any territory in Afghanistan, but it has sleeper cells that have been attacking religious minorities in the country as well as patrols by the ruling Taliban. Though the Taliban group claims to have protected the country since taking power in August last year and largely eliminated the Islamic State's local offshoot, the international officials and analysts believe the risk of resurgence in attacks remains. The fact that explosions have been occurring in Shia, Shia mosques, that Shias are being targeted in, Tali, in, uh, in uh, Talibanized Afghanistan should not surprise anybody. Initially, because the Taliban had managed to recruit Shia commanders at the behest of Iran, people thought this would be a more inclusive Taliban. I think that has been shown to be false quite some time ago. And uh, so, if in Taliban ruled Afghanistan, Shiites are being targeted, it's not surprising at all. Since the Taliban group took over Kabul, bombings and attacks have been the norm, and unabated human rights abuses, including the constant killing of civilians and the destruction of mosques and temples, have escalated fear in the territory. The Taliban often refers to the Islamic State of Khorasan as its worst foe, while in reality, the two organizations work together to foment terrorism in Afghanistan. 
A UNSC report few months back reveals that Islamic State Khurasan or ISIS-K is recruiting fighters from the Eastern Turkestan Islamic Movement and the Turkestan Islamic Party, among other foreign terrorist groups. It aims to position itself as the chief rejectionist force in Afghanistan and to expand into neighboring Central and South Asian countries. The UN member states are concerned that if Afghanistan descends into further chaos, some Afghan and foreign violent extremists may shift allegiances to Islamic State. The Islamic, I mean, the Islamic State was never absent from Taliban. The Taliban is very clear, as long as somebody does not challenge them, they are uh, willing to let them survive. The target of the Islamic State, essentially, the first target is basically Shiite Muslims. So they have been going after the Shiite Muslims and Taliban has no problem with the Islamic State of going after uh, Shiite Muslims. The fact that Ayman al-Zawahiri was caught in Afghanistan is also testimony to the fact that the Taliban promise of not letting Afghan soil be used for terrorist purposes against the Americans that has also turned out to be false. So the Taliban are breaking one promise after the other. The war scene in Afghanistan is diverse and multifaceted, marked by rivalry among jihadist organizations and competition for recruitment. The impacts go beyond the borders of Afghanistan. As a result, the situation in Afghanistan continues to demand great attention. Moving on, India has criticized the United Nations Security Council for being selective in highlighting terrorism and has urged that there should be no double standards in dealing with terror. While raising off linkages between terrorism and organized crime in the Security Council debate, India stressed that the matter needs to be addressed. Take a look. An effective functioning of the sanction committees requires them to become more transparent, accountable and objective. The practice of placing holes and blocks on listing requests without giving any justification must end. These were the critical statements of India during a United Nations Security Council debate on threats to international peace and security caused by terrorist acts. Indian diplomat Ruchira Kamboj stated the double standards and continuing politicization have rendered the credibility of sanctions regime at all-time low. There can be no justification for terrorist acts much less glorification of terrorists, a tendency we have unfortunately seen in recent years in some parts of the world. There should be no double standards in dealing with terrorists. We should refrain from labeling terrorism based on motivations, which will only allow opportunistic forces to provide justification for certain terror activities based on their convenience. While expressing dissatisfaction on the issue of double standards in dealing with terrorists, India also raised concern on the organized crime. New threats to global security are emerging, meaning that people can fall victim to organized crime in an increasing number of ways and in an increasing number of places. Terrorists get benefit from organized crime as a source of financing or logistical support through the illicit trafficking of arms, persons, trucks, artifacts and cultural property. Addressing these linkages has become an increasing priority for the international community. During the UNSC debate, New Delhi stressed the linkages between terrorism and organized crime need to be addressed. Linkages between terrorism and organized crime need to be addressed. In India, we've had first-hand experience of crime syndicates venturing into terrorism and immediately thereafter getting state hospitality in a neighboring country, despite being listed under the Council 1267 sanction committees. Such hypocrisy needs to be collectively called out. 
when the threat of terrorism looms large in each of our countries. Terrorism is a global phenomena whose destructive potential and lethal reach is enhanced by breakneck technological innovations and an ever-evolving digital landscape. Terrorists are using internet and social media for propaganda, radicalization and recruitment of cadre. Misuse of new payment methods such as blockchain currencies, payment wallets and crowdfunding platforms for terror financing. Domestic measures alone cannot deal with terrorism as long as some countries continue to provide safe haven for terrorists. Therefore, to be effective, the fight against terrorism must be long-term, sustained and global. It must tackle not just the perpetrators of the act, but also who support and sponsor them. The security forces in Jammu and Kashmir are trying hard to finish terrorism in the valley and Pakistan-backed terrorists are being killed in encounters one after another. Recently, three lashkar e taiba terrorists including Latif Rathar, who was involved in the killing of Kashmiri Pandit Rahul Bhatt in May, were killed in an encounter with security forces in Badgam district of the Union Territory. Our report. Islamabad's executive wing specializing in terrorism received a huge setback as Indian security forces trapped three park-backed terrorists in an ongoing encounter in Bargaon, including Lashkar commander Latif Hatha, who was involved in killing of Kashmiri pundits Rahul Bhatt and TV actor Amreen Bhatt. And information concerning the presence of terrorists in the region was sent to a joint team of police and security services. After which, security forces launched a cordon and a search operation in the area. Just a day before this crackdown, security forces apprehended a Lashkar hybrid terrorist identified as Arshad Ahmad Bhatt with five pistols and two grenades in Srinagar. कल शाम में एसोसिएशन नगर को एक इनपुट मिला था कि बतरहल बड़गांव डिस्ट्रिक्ट में लश्कर तेवा के तीन टेरिस्ट छिपे हुए जिसमें कि लतीफ राथर भी है जो बहुत सारे सेवलेन के लिए इन्वॉल्व था खास के आमरीन भट्ट में राहुल भट्ट के किलिंग में और पुलिस वाल के किलिंग में तो जब आर्मी पुलिस या पी मिलकर कॉर्डन डाला कॉर्डन लाते हैं रात में तीन बजे फायरिंग शुरू हो गई और रात में चूँकि अंधेरा था तो हम लोग ऑपरेशन को रोक दिए अभी ऑपरेशन मॉर्निंग रिज्यूम हो गया जिसमें तीनों टेरिस्ट लश्कर तबाह के मारे गए There are some challenges with regard to hybrid terrorism. Identifying hybrid terrorists is a big challenge and to arrest them or stop them from doing any unlawful activities. If that's not possible, then neutralizing them in encounters is a big challenge. Security officials in Jammu and Kashmir say that hybrid terrorism could pose a biggest challenge for year 2022. They are spreading their network all across the valley. After the spate of encounters in the Kashmir Valley in recent months, Indian security forces have intensified their anti-terrorist operations and engaged in back-to-back -back encounters across the region. According to a recent report of Jammu and Police in 2022, Kashmir has witnessed 75 encounters in which 126 terrorists have been killed. Out of these 126 terrorists, 33 were foreigners, mostly from Pakistan. However, 19 civilians have also died in various terror attacks in the valley, while 16 security personnel have also lost their lives. More than 50 terrorists have been arrested by the security forces this year, while over 190 over-the-ground workers have been captured as well. Pakistan today considers terrorist groups like lashkar e taiba jaish e mohammed Hezbollah, Mujahid as their strategic assets and they think that with their help they can carry out 
वायलेंस इन कश्मीर वैली एंड कीप द वैली कश्मीर टेररिज्म प्लॉट बॉइलिंग देर बाय गेटिंग द इश्यू ऑफ कश्मीर एट द इंटरनेशनल फोरम इन विच दे आर बींग हेल्प बाय पाकिस्तान इफ यू सी द रिसेंट पास देर हैव बीन लॉट ऑफ किलिंग्स ऑफ हिंदूज एंड अदर पीपल सॉफ्ट टारगेट्स इन द कश्मीर वैली इन्फिल्ट्रेशन फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द एल ओ सी कंटिन्यूज अनबेटेड Throughout history Pakistan has sought to undermine India's stability its unity and its integrity with varying degrees of intensity this strategy is not likely to alter However Indian security forces are always vigilant alert and capable of giving a befitting reply After the targeted killings in the region Indian security forces have taken a plethora of strategically key initiatives aimed at boosting its counterterrorism strategy. Islamabad should now understand that any attempt to challenge India's integrity will be disastrous for it. Pakistan needs to make a hard choice now. Find peace with India or blunder into an escalatory cycle. low cost options are over moving on pakistan army has been at war against india since its birth islamabad's goal is to challenge a superior force through long time covert and proxy operations pushing narcotics and fake indian currency notes are part of this operation the key concern today is the startling fact that pakistan based crime syndicates have copied the most exclusive security features of indian currency notes of feat not possible without the connivance of the state missionary a report pakistan has been supportive to several terrorist groups despite stern warnings from the international community the country's intelligence agencies have been working with terror groups on a kill to birds with one stone strategy to smuggle weapons and narcotics into india through the same routes arms and weapons are given to those terror groups which are active in jammu and kashmir while narcotics are handed to gangsters and smugglers in regions like punjab for sale and then the money is minted for fueling terrorism Moreover, Pakistan's another favored tactic of war against India is counterfeiting currency. It is part of a larger strategy, a low-intensity fight against the Indian economy by Pakistan's deep state. This strategy gathered base over the past decade and counterfeit notes began flooding the Indian market. Indeed, The problem is now so widespread that the Reserve Bank of India regularly brings out circulars on how to identify counterfeit currency notes as well as notifications on fake series in circulation. The fake currency note racket as far as India is concerned is very directly attributable to Pakistan and its cross border financing tactics and this has been established and it is not only from now it has been going on for a very very long time and we know that all the terror groups smuggling activities extremist groups radicalization activities all these are grossly funded uh, through the uh, currency uh, notes which are fake and printed uh, in pakistan it is an industry and it is an industry with a motive with a purpose to undermine the economy and create disquiet and terror and extremism in india counterfeit currency has long been recognized as a source of funding for terrorism in india in 2011 The International Narcotics Control Strategy Report of the US State Department confirmed the flow of counterfeit currency produced in Pakistan to India and that terrorist and criminal networks used this money to finance their activities in the country. 
It has been revealed that Pakistan's secret agency, the ISI, has managed to create currency of better visual quality than the earlier photocopied notes. Pakistan-based crime syndicates have copied the most exclusive security features of 2,000 Indian currency notes, a feat not possible without the connivance of the state machinery. The notes seized by Indian security agencies have proved that optical variable ink used by India in printing 2,000 notes has also been used by the Pakistan operatives. According to sources, high-tech optical variable ink is used in Pakistan security press in Malir Halt, Karachi. And over time, they have also mastered the, uh, the kind of watermark, the kind of security features that are introduced in the notes. And uh, there is, it's, it's a full-fledged business model. But with terror in, 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 uh, embedded in it, and therefore the dimension of it is far more dangerous and needs to be defeated. Till six months back, fake notes printed in Pakistan covered only watermark, portrait of Mahatma Gandhi, Ashoka pillars and common security features. But the latest fake currency notes have all the high-tech security features. Indian security agencies have to take various steps in order to eradicate this menace. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.nin.com. This is Yeshi signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV.